Introducing the Death Knell Mini, sexiest daughter in the Death Knell family. This is a budget base for a small group of 4 to 6 players. The design goal was to keep it as affordable as possible while punching far above its price category in terms of features and strength, so that even your small group can have a big boy base. And for this reason, the build comes with several upgrade paths for you to consider based on playstyle, group size and wipe progression, going from a strong but non-HQM reliant base to an absolute armored monster. Let's do a proper base tour. By one of two airlock chutes, we enter the third floor. This is where you make the always important first impression on guests, so flame traps, turrets, all great here. Going down, the second floor is a garage door filled corridor with six branching loot rooms containing 24 large boxes. This is where we keep most of our loot while playing, with the good stuff going to the bunkers when we log off for the day. Now the core is small and designed to soak up explosives. Armoring these walls is the first upgrade on the optional upgrade tree, but even if you don't, this delicious rocket sponge center boasts a staggering five layers of lateral protection. Let's go back up to the third floor, our entrance floor. Here we also have three jump ups to the fourth floor, leading to three more double bedrooms. There's a total of about 18 beds in the base for truly tenacious online defense. Via one of three airlocks we go out to the shooting floor which can be easily segmented should the need arise. Here we have a combination of ramp peaks and wide gap peaks which might peak your intra- never mind, never mind. This here is one of three wide gapped modules. Inside we have a bottom bedroom featuring peaks overlooking the sides and the core of the base. And going up, the top bedroom extends the shooting floor, also providing us with a shooting port by which to secure the roof or the shooting floor area itself. To get to the roof we have three jump ups. From here we can also open the roof bunkers, which by the way also figure into the optional upgrade plan. And as you probably noticed, traversing the base is a breeze. It's very simple to navigate. And it's also simple to build. Let me show you. It all starts with one armored TC compartment. Then, a circle of metal foundations, followed by a wider circle, closed in with walls. This will of course all be stone when starting the wipe and upgraded later. Ceilings will be built from the outside in, so as to avoid the triangle splash bug. In the inner hexagon, the jump up to the second floor will be directly to the right of the TC compartment and the rest of the hexagon closed in with armored ceilings. Going up to the second floor, we will build a standard triangle chute. The second floor too, being part of our starter base, will be walled in. Now on the second floor, before shaping the loot rooms, honeycomb the right side of the chute down. Then six loot rooms will be built as follows. Here we'll have a double shelf, closed with a window. To the right another loot room, closed with a metal wall on the right side. Continue with two more loot rooms, with the window side facing to the left. Here, after four loot rooms, we'll place a jump up, with metal walls to both sides. And to the right of it, two more loot rooms facing each other. The top is to be closed in as before, 
from the outside in. Metal on the outside and HQM atop the central core with another basic triangle chute. Inside, on the second floor, we'll spam as many garage doors as we can on every available socket. And turrets are a great addition here too. As for the first floor core, we'll honeycomb it from the inside. And this is how. First, wall in the core hexagon, leaving an opening next to the jump up. The idea here is to honeycomb the core hexagon with metal, adding stone separators between honeycomb layers. So take a step back from this triangle and build a stone wall here, followed by metal honeycomb for the core. Continue alternating between stone wall and metal honeycomb until you arrive back at the core entrance. Once back inside the core, we close it all in. And to complete the core, we'll add some shelves and garage doors. And that's the starter base done. In the next stage, we'll expand with two more floors vertically, adding utility rooms, bedrooms, and two main entrances. So first, we outline the third floor. Start with four metal walls to the right of the chute. Then follow with an airlock entrance, like so. To the right, three more metal walls and a second airlock. And three metal walls to close it in. Now we shape the bedrooms. First, to the right of the chute, a windowed compartment will house a battery or a locker. Then we add a jump up and two garage doors. I like having bedrooms here, but these can also be designated for loot or utility. If you go for bedrooms, just make sure this bed doesn't clip through the door. And we can do the same for the three remaining rooms on this floor. To mitigate splash damage somewhat, we'll add a wall and two doors in the middle of the floor, in a kind of Y shape. And that's the third floor done. Now is also a great time to add two levels of metal honeycomb, followed by one level of stone, except for where we have these entrances. There we'll build basic ground level chute entrances like so. Next we add a bedroom above each of the jump ups. The bedroom design is identical to the ones below, except that on the left we have a metal shelf with a very important turret. And between our three new bedrooms we'll add three airlocks. Note that both the doors open outwards. Next we go out, add this triangle here, and close with a garage door and two windows. And with that done on all three sides, the core of the base is now nearly complete. In the next stage of the build, we'll add initial online defenses and extra bedrooms using three wide gap defensive modules. On the sides of the base with the garage doors on top, whether we have a chute or not, it's the same thing. Build out three triangles, followed by three squares. 
leave only the last square and from it build triangles towards the base like so. Then add two levels of frames. These will support three metal floors. On top, looking towards the base, we'll add a set of windows. Towards the outside, a layer of half walls topped by full walls. And you know what, it gets tricky here, I'll just shut up and let you watch. And just like that, we're done. So I'll quickly furnish it and show you what we have here. At the bottom, we add a bedroom and a large chest for raid defense kits. On top, another bedroom, useful for controlling what will later be our roof. I also like adding a single door here to give the bedroom a bit more protection when the garage door is opened. And to finish this module, we're going to add two double doors on both sides of the white gap shooting floor, attached to the main base and opening inwards. These will help us segment the shooting floor later. I also highly suggest adding cheap electrical components to block anyone from building twig platforms and getting too close to the chests. And to maintain the modules while adding grief protection to the base, we'll build external TCs. This time of the detachable variety, which we hope remains unpatched for a while. To build these, add a stone foundation here, followed by three twig foundations. Then a metal triangle and a stone one. The TC compartment differs from the norm only in that you start with two half walls facing the main base. These will screw a bit with stability, allowing you to perform the magical rust trick you're about to witness. The rest of it is pretty plain. Now this twig support will help us connect the TC to the module with horizontal frames. And whenever necessary, you can detach this TC by building a twig roof here. Ninth level lore of rust spell. Oh, by the way, I just found you can easily elevate the disconnecting mechanism. I'm not sure why you'd actually do that, but uh, just putting it out there. Anyway, these modules are so cheap for what they add to a base, it's amazing. So keep them in mind for your own builds. And in the next stage of our build, we'll complete our shooting floor, add three armored floating bunkers and roof exits, and finish the roof defenses. Let the wall stacking commence. On the three non-wide gap sides of the core, we'll do this. First, build a twig triangle here. Then continue with nine twig squares. Destroy all the twiggies but for the last one, and from it, build back with triangles until you can place this central HQM foundation, surrounding it with five more, like so. To upkeep this, it's possible to have the disconnectable TCs from before, but just in case those get patched, here's how to build regular ones. First, we go four twig squares out. Then, these two triangles will serve as foundations for a standard 8-rocket TC enclosure. When done, we build back with metal frames. Add two metal triangles here, and get rid of the twiggies. And there we go. Now let's start work on the actual build-up. First we need a whole bunch of frames for stability. Then on top, we complete this walkway, and then add two metal squares on both sides of the frames. In the middle, it'll be a square frame and a triangle pointing outwards. Window frames then complete the shooting floor. The 
For peak downs, first build a ramp on one of the squares, then crouch down and build the twig supports required for the placement of the second ramp. Once the second ramp is in place, the scaffolding can be removed. Now we can add the floating roof bunkers in relative safety. First, upgrade this left side triangle and build a bit of honeycomb. Now for the armored version of the bunkers, upgrade this frame, these two triangles and this wall here, which you should rotate after upgrading. Next come a wall, a frame, which you should rotate as well, and a couple of triangles on top. Ideally, the shelf should be built from the outside so as to avoid the triangle splash bug so long as it's still with us. You can now seal the bunker, and I suggest adding a single door frame to the right. Make sure it's placed on the external foundations, however, or a gap will appear on the side of the bunker. To open it, simply shout the words Open Sesame. And the door here is optional. Next we make ourselves some permanent roof exits. Add a stone half wall and a triangle tile here. Followed by two walls and a triangle ceiling. Here we'll add a frame, another triangle and a garage door. And these little compartments are perfect for turrets. Next we'll take care of the roof, as well as this little gap atop the bunker. So what we do is attach our ceilings to the inner socket. Not the bunker wall itself, but the core. The same goes for the other ceiling tiles, all attaching to the core rather than the wall stacked buildup. So this is a nice big roof. I like finishing it up like this, but you can do you. Good visibility makes it easier to defend, so I just go with a heli garage. Just a heads up, don't build directly on top of the bunker wall here, or it will destroy the bunker mechanism. And a couple of insta-death shotgun traps here would be pretty smart as well, just in case. And we're almost completely done! The only thing left to add is our final layer of honeycomb. These frames here will seal the wall stacking gap. And there we go, perfect. Now regarding compound entrances, pixel bunkers are easily the best, but also I really like these. And there she is, all done, the Death Knell Mini. Strong, defensible, maneuverable, fully featured and most importantly, extremely cheap for what it offers. Now I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you like the build and use it, and even more so I hope you learned at least something to make your own future designs better. So goodbye for now, and blessed be.